um, an article from um, News Source, God Mosley, kind of caught my eyes where Jack Dio, you know, basically admittedly admit that, you know, the PPPC would have received donations from the Mohammeds. And he said it was nothing different than what, you know, the Mohammeds does for other parties. I'm going to say this. If the Mohammeds do um, donate to the PPPC and the APNU, the amounts that are donated is not equal across the board. I'm going to just say this, you know, without seeing anything. But one thing I must say, Mark, is that he's been put in check enough now that when questions are asked, you know, there is some truth to the answer and the answer is, is, is forthcoming. He's not throwing the nonsense that he continually throws at Guyanese people because he's in check and he's going to stay in check. Because as far as I'm concerned, Barry Jaglio is irrelevant. And Guyanese need to start understanding that. You guys was just being led and ruled by a common dunce. Okay? Because our country should be in a much better position than it is right now. Economically. Look, Mark, I'm going to use the U.S. as an example. They have... It's been said that we're going to be hitting a recession. You know, they're expecting a recession. And Mark, there's a lot of things that points, you know, to a recession. But why are we not in a recession, Mark? Because jobs continue to soar and salaries continue to soar. So that's preventing any recession. And now the stock market is repairing itself. So that's, that's the kind of things that need to happen in Guyana, Mark. That's why I'm so quick to say that while they call Guyana the fastest growing economy, I certainly feel that when you look at that from an underlying perspective, Guyana is in a recession. Cost of living is through the roof. There is no jobs to the people. Okay? Those two things alone, just using those two criterias, Mark, and there are many other criterias, and the fact that the revenue that is coming from the oil money is not hitting Guyanese, that alone puts Guyana in a recession, although it's showing that it's the fastest growing economy. So people need to be very, very careful what they go out there saying. Okay, while we might be the fastest growing economy, our people are not growing because the government, the government of today, people, this same PPPC government is not investing in you. This government does not care about you, and they call themselves a caring government. Over to you, Mark. Well, definitely they're not a caring government, but as it pertains to... Uh, these culprits, the Mohammeds, them, and who they donate uh, um, to political parties and so forth, uh, people attempt to justify, say, oh, they donate to everybody, parties, and these sort of things. Uh, uh, let me just say this, that uh, during the 2020 elections, uh, the coalition, the officials of the coalition were instructed by David Granger not or the leadership of the coalition not to accept monetary donations from the Mohammeds and a few others. Not to accept any sort of donations from them. Now there were some little hustlers within the coalition who ran in with a little brown paper bag, collect the thing and they go on the way, collect the thing and they go on the way, and whatever. But uh, the biggest donor to the PPP during the course of the 2020 elections was actually, uh, it could possibly be 
um, these culprits, the Mohammed stem. So Jagdeo is trying to make it look as though, oh, they might have. But look at who gave cars to uh, Irfan Ali on the day that he was illegally sworn in and so forth and so on. Look at, look at what happened there, right? Look at what happened. So um, there's no justification. Oh, other stack and this. But there are lots of people whose hands are in the, the cookie jar, so to speak. Lots of them. And so some people are only attempting to justify now a who tech, a who in tech, a who in tech. Well, at least I could tell you all this. I could tell you all this. Not a single one of them, not a single one of them ain't giving me no crumbs and I ain't accepting no crumbs and it didn't matter what it is. Not me. Absolutely not me. But you are correct, though, that the bulk of the money that the Mohammed's possibly donated, went straight to the PPP to finance the PPP in every area in the 2020 uh, rigged general and regional elections. And and so, um, you know, this whole news by Jack Deo and who, you know, Jack Deo is the last person to be speaking about these things. Uh, but you are correct, guys. It seem to be in a recession. No jobs, no nothing. The billions of dollars we see Hess the oil company boasting and bragging that Guyana will get better and better, better and better for Hess and these oil companies, but not for the ordinary people. Mark, that's propaganda. That's all propaganda there. You know, they're pushing at this. Why, you know, sometimes when you see some of these big media companies come out and you see these, you know, articles posted from some of these oil companies and, and, and these big investors, you can't read into it and believe everything that you see there. You know, um, Hess and these companies, yes, they're in Guyana and they're gaining a lot. Their profit margin is so lopsided, you know, in favor, you know, of them, right? So when they come out and they, you know, they try to say that, hey, Guyana is going to get better, they, listen, any interest that, Hess and these oil companies have shown in Guyana, they have not shown it towards the people of Guyana. Everybody wants Guyana, but they don't want the people that comes along with Guyana. And we could look at that in different ways, you know. I will not elaborate further, but I know that our viewers are very, very smart. We can look at that in different ways because there are certain things that only happen to certain people. But listen, we would have liberated Guyana. Our four parents would have shed their blood and give up their lives to Guyana. And we're not giving up Guyana to anybody. You know, they're having, they're having fun right now. But like the Bible says in, in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. You know, and come 2025, you know, we're going to have our people edified. They're going to be ready to go, and we're going to recapture our country. So PPP, you know, you could come and you could offer them 100 and 200,000 and all that you want to offer them to vote PPPC. But people, I'm telling you, don't be dense. Be very smart. You're worth way more than that. Okay? Vote for change. Allow change to work. Not this system that we have in place that we would have heard a few times, oh, allow the system to work. We don't have any system that works in Guyana. We have a framework. But when the, you see, the thing is when you have a framework, Mark, the framework needs a dancing partner in order for it to work. Okay, the PPPC is definitely not that dancing partner. Over to you, Mark. Thank you so much. 55 minutes after nine o'clock. For those of you who are now joining us, my name is Mark Benjop, and with me is Wayne Caesar. And um, uh, let me ask. Let me ask. Uh, um, I notice uh, Dennis Atwell. Good evening to you, Dennis. Says, Stop saying 2025. What else can we say? Elections are constitutionally due in 2025, so we can only say 2025. We can't say 2026, even though the PVP. Uh, will attempt to stretch it uh, into 2025, late 2025, create a situation at GCOM for it to go 
all the way over to 2026. So we got to be realistic. We, we just got to be realistic. We want elections. We want the regime to collapse like immediately. We want that to happen. Uh, if it happens tomorrow, all Guyanese will be freed. All Guyanese. Uh, we're not hearing much from the MPs these days. What's going on, Mr. Caesar? Are they back in their nests? What's happening? Well, listen, Mark, I'm going to say this. I'm a bit disappointed, okay? Because, listen, we're already past halfway of 2023, right? We have 2024, and then we have 2025 around August. That's when elections are going to be. Jack Dew is going to act for that time. You know, we had that little lapse in between, you know, when they were trying to determine who would have won the 2020 general and regional elections, which was totally rigged by the PPPC and the international community and CARICOM and, and, and all these people, the ABC countries, all of you guys. All of you guys put the Guyanese people in what they are in today. Maya Motley, all of you guys. Utter nonsense what you guys would have done to the people. CCJ, all of you guys are complicit. Mark, I'm calling out people. I'm, I'm not hesitating to call these people out. They're all complicit in what would have happened to the people of Guyana. Including okay. including some of them, including some of them in the opposition, uh, in the then coalition as well, who didn't go out and do much. There are lots of stories. Okay. Maybe one day in a nice book, everything will be revealed, but I don't want to steal your thunder as you uh, speak this evening. Go right ahead, sir. No. Yeah, Mark, as I, as I was saying, and listen, Yes, there are some people in the opposition who's culpable because I remember when they were going back into the elections, there was a big fight for Moses Nagamutu to be replaced as the um, prime ministerial candidate, which Kemra Dramjatan ended up being that candidate, right? Am I correct on that, Mark? Am I correct? Yep, uh, Moses, I, I almost sorry about that, Mr. Caesar. Yeah, I almost Moses forgot that we had a prime minister by the name of Moses uh Versami. In fact, his name is actually Versami, not Moses, well, because yes. on, his, on his birth certificate it's uh Versami and not Moses, but he prefers to be called Moses. Thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot that we had a a prime minister by the name of Moses Nagamu too. Uh, but whatever he's up to these days, uh, but back to your question, you are correct. Um but go ahead, sir. Yeah, no, I think I think he's I think he's writing books and doing a few things there, but I think it was well, a little me, bit. Let of, me quickly. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I think he was writing. <laughs> let me books. quickly. Uh, yeah, go um, ahead. Let me quickly address um, some of these coalition people. One of them is uh, Yanat Elias. Uh, always focus on these particular areas. So. Yanet is saying one thing with Mark, he never calls his friend Granger name. Uh, I have said this on numerous occasions that things should have gone better in the elections. Mistakes were made. Mr. Granger has to accept responsibility for some of those mistakes that were made. He was surrounded by some, uh, some folks who were basically flat foot hustlers. Uh, he's not much of a, a street person, so he he was taken advantage of to some extent. Um, and so, sorry about that, guys. And so, and and so, there are many times when I called out David Arthur Granger when he was president, when he was opposition leader. Uh, but over the over the coalition period, we have seen a lot of snakes within the coalition. Some are still lingering around. And for anybody to say that I don't call out or I have never called out David Granger, it is because they were never paying attention to my show. I remember the days when I was and, and a few others, Lincoln Lewis and others, who were calling out the coalition to do the right thing. But there were many people, many people who are now cussing him, David Granger, were cussing us. They were cursing me inboxing me telling me that a bitter that you're jealous you in your position you get all manner of things they were cussing out left right and center and majority of the people who are cussing me out now are cussing out david granger 
and talking about the very things that we were trying to highlight them about and say, hey, guys, you guys are not doing what needs to be done. We were cursed out. When I ran for mayor of Georgetown, they, they ran against me. They cursed me out, all manner of things. I'm trying to be nice, guys, right? And so those who were cursing me then for David Granger expect me to hold their hands now and cuss David Granger for them. It's not going to happen, I repeat. It is not going to happen. David Granger made mistakes, yes. Story done. So don't try to say that I defend Granger and I never call out Granger. Nah, nah, wrong person. Sorry, I don't want to steal your thunder tonight, Mr. Um, um, Caesar. But we are talking about the members of parliament are seem to have gone back in their cuckoo nest, most of them. That is, most of them. Go ahead. 